This video aims to educate you a little bit on how to do custom graphics on your Blue Pill device. And the Blue Pill, the Blue Pill server has a big color display with a lot of custom graphics that we can do. It, this is the boot screen, this is what you see by default, but we can change over to other things. I also want to mention that what we are doing in this video will also apply to other panels like, you know, any of our panels have a ton of graphical displays. They are usually monochrome, black and white panels in pixel dimensions like 64 by 32 pixels or 64 by 30, 48 and, and so on. This, um, it also applies to those. It, we have also grayscale displays on some controllers any case, you can customize graphics quite a lot. And we want to check out how this configuration looks. So if we go to configuration, you basically see the blue pill. You see this is the, um, the simulated view is exactly what we have in the display. So we don't need to look at this all the time. And I also want to separate out the simulator real quick by pressing this tab and opening it in a new window here so that we can just have it over here on the side and then zoom in a little bit to follow the graphics as we are changing configuration. So I'll just rearrange my browser window slightly so that we can follow along over here and we don't need all that space for our central view right here. So we have more for our tree and for the inspector on this side. When I pick a configuration like this one, it, this file gets included. And here we have a definition of the bottom half, the top half and the bottom strip. The bottom strip is this part of the display at the very bottom down here. And the top half is uh, that one up here and the bottom half is, is this guy. And if we inspect like the bottom half, for instance, this, you see in show more inside of default feedback, this is where it says um, that this is an icon and it is pointing to an icon which is in the file system of the, the blue pill. So if I wanted to, I could just change it to a different graphic if I, if I wanted to and just check it and it's also on my blue pill here. Um, but I don't want that, so I'll just go down and see if I can find uh, something else. Okay, here's a funny icon that now is picked. And of course, I want for the boot screen, that would be the graphic, the QR code. Okay, so that's the basic thing, but that's not the most exciting. I rather wanted to point your attention to the configuration known as React Activity, because that's a pretty complex one, right? That's interesting, has a lot of cool things going for it. So if we go into the configuration, we can play a little bit with this and explore how that works. Before this video, I noticed a bug that we need to address because if I go straight to the JSON editor here and if I change something, it won't actually affect the display over here, only after doing something. So, um, and I don't know why. But let's just go into the JSON straight away and see if we can recognize some of these things. I guess the first thing that we see is that we have six behaviors defined that we can kind of imagine what means. Tally would be the LED on the back side of the blue pill. Then you have the bottom quarter, and that is probably this part of the device. So basically that side down here. It's the one says devices, zero, okay, one, okay, panels, and so on. The, the bottom strip would be the IP address down here. The second quarter would be this one that says graphics right now. And then the third quarter would be this one that says panels. And the top quarter would be the icon at the very top. This is what I infer from looking at this. You can also check it with the HVC key map and which hardware components or graphical tiles they are mapped to. Let's check out the top quarter because I think the top quarter is kind of easy and it turns out to be, it's an icon. It is referring to an icon file. This is um, baked into the blue pill and uh, it has something called shrink mode, ignore. What is that? Ah, yeah, okay, it's something with pixels on the sides and so on. Okay, so that's all fine. That's just an, an icon like we did it for the other one. But what about, Devices. <clears throat> if we go to devices, that would be the bottom quarter, okay? <clears throat> and um, I just, you know, unfold that one thing at a time. By the way, I'm holding down shift, and when I'm holding down shift, I and click that expand icon of um, unfold, then it will unfold everything. If I still hold down shift and I click it once again, then you can see that it folds up to the first level, and then a shift click again, and it's all the way up to the root. It can be really nice to have it all folded up to the root like that because now if I do not hold down shift and I click, then it's kind of unfolding one thing at a time. I want to get into composition because the data source is not icon this time. It's called composition. And inside composition, you can have, you know, other compositions in layers, just like in Photoshop. 
So here we see we have layers and we have a one, two, three, four, five, six layers apparently. Now let's get into the first one. And then, there we have an object called box and that actually indicates within this tile and I know that tile is like 128 pixels wide and 36 pixels high. Within that tile, we define a box which is 40 pixels wide, height eight pixels, it is vertical aligned to the top and it is also left aligned. It's of type graphics and inside graphics we have an array of objects that would be um, one here called devices. So we are probably looking at this little guy here. It says devices and um, underneath that one we have a rectangle. Now I want to change devices here to just hey like this okay and this is the moment why it won't work because it's now saving into because of the bug I mentioned. I now saved this and um, if I go back to my configuration, I, I just wonder why didn't it update over here? And I don't know exactly. So I'll just quickly fix this bug. And I realized that if I made any change to any of these, like going to the tally here and uh, maybe just remove the tally because I don't need it for this particular thing, then it sort of saves my configuration. So when I go edit it again, like if I click here for editing it, then it picked up my change. It says, hey, now. I can't exactly explain it, but it's not supposed to work like that. When I edit that file, it's supposed to just pick it up immediately, but somehow it didn't. So, but now we can move on and we can play a little bit more with these uh, things. So let's just do like this and say, okay, on the bottom quarter, we were playing with this. So basically uh, let's try something else because within this composition, it was interesting to see that this box here was um, just 40 pixels wide. What if we change this to 60? Okay, so you'll see immediately that box becomes wider. What happens if we change this one? And let's see if we have hold down control and space, then it usually gives us options. So we can choose now bottom, center or top. And I think we'll choose center and probably this one would move down and oh, okay, it did not vertical align within that box. I don't know why it did that or did not do that. Horizontal align. Let's just try change this to right. Ah, yeah, I need to save. Okay, so what would happen right now is that horizontal align would move it all the way over to the side and then it would probably appear something like here because we also have it center line now. Let's check it, okay? Yep, it did. Now, if we look at the graphics, um, because that's the box. Uh, we have this full tile and the tile is 128 times 36 pixels, if I remember correctly. And um, uh, vertical or horizontal alignment would be where in that area is this little box of this dimension placed. The graphics that we have here would happen inside and the first one is text. So this is layers, this is two layers basically. And the rectangle is the lower layer, then on top of that is the text layer. I could change the color code so that it was blue instead. And if I did so, this would be blue text. I could um, change the offset. The offset is two from the left side. So if we change that to five instead, then we will see that it's, it has more white space over here on that side. Uh, there is a number of fonts we can choose between. I'm not sure that, oh, the system does know. Okay, that's pretty neat. Let's just pick this font instead and then see, okay, so that was a different font. Apparently not a better one in this case because yeah, obviously it was too big, but I could change it. And I have color code here. I don't know if probably need to. Okay, so this should be some magenta stuff. Okay. That worked. Rounded corners, no thanks. Just set that to zero. You get an absolutely square or rectangular um, box and so on. So you see how we can really build graphics like this and you can play yourself with it if you want. So I will just uh, close down this one and then I'll try to expand one of the other ones to see what is inside of that. So what is this? This is a box that is having, let's say, four objects. That's probably the text lines here, these dotted text lines. And they are drawing data out of Reactor. They are looking for the name of device number one, the name of the second device, the name of the third device. So these are data sources that we are using, inserting for the text here. It's the top left, left top, that's all the same but the offset Y is what offsets them from each other. Okay, so this is why we have line one, two, three, four here. That is because of this Y offset. Okay, so that's explained, that's pretty neat. What about the box? 
See, the box is interesting because it is right aligned. So it, and hey, by the way, I think there's like an option so that we can sort of, um, or maybe it's outside, maybe it is outside, it is here. We have something like, let me see, disable mask, no, 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 show, show box on top. That is a Boolean that we can set. Let's just see, yeah, set it true, save. And now what happens is, oh, okay, syntax error. All right, so that is the issue up there, save. Now, <clears throat> the idea of show box on top is that it gives you this line that indicates the box so that you understand that um, the, the box that we are specifying here, where is that located? We could also left align it. And if we do so, then you see the box moves over there with all its content. The, the box is set to be, uh, the negative width is actually saying, hey, the full width of, of the tile minus 45 pixels. So if I say minus 60, then it just becomes smaller. And if the tile had been smaller, then it would be even smaller, always 60 pixels smaller than the tile. So that's a neat way for us, in a sense, to build out something where if you look at the first layer, we actually originally had a box. Now we changed it. Originally, it was like 40. So we changed this one to 40. We had it, uh, let me see, vertical aligned. It was, was top aligned. It was also left aligned like that. That would actually bring this magenta box back in place up here. And it would be, let me see, right there. Here we have it. Okay. And then the one underneath, it was minus 45 so that it would sort of just create this gap between the two. And you can imagine this would be the same for the panels. So um, that, that's a pretty cool feature. Very easy to align graphics on an unknown size canvas. Then we have one here. What is that? Okay. It says if we have warnings or if warnings, if there are no warnings and if reactor devices, uh, if there's zero unconnected reactor devices, then it's showing something here. Says something like, okay, oh, this is the box. Okay, so that's the one. That's the one. Uh, it is apparently likely that maybe the next one would be a different condition. So it only shows this layer if a certain condition is true. In this case, if we if the warnings is different from zero, I think if we edit this one, it would probably be like that. Um, that's a little bit tricky, yeah. Um, so if warnings is not zero, then it would show this one that seems to ah, have something different for us. So that's the number of connected devices. And then f I, I just think that we also would have one which is more a little bit like a warning here. It's probably if, if there are some devices that are not connected, it would show this warning. And then finally, down here, we have one that says if um, these devices are not connected either, then we have a red rectangle shown. So um, yeah, I'm sorry for not being able to completely decipher what these are, but you can you can work with them yourself. And uh, just notice that we have active if statements like conditions that would enable or disable this graphical element. There is graphics that is typically a rectangle with a color background and then on top some text. We can draw some data out of the system by doing this. We have a box that defines the area inside of which we are working. The offset here is basically saying, um, yeah, this one, the, the vertical alignment top and left, that would be from here, but then it's being offset 21 pixels in this direction and then in the Y direction, uh, also 10 pixels down. Um, so that is what would happen if this one was true. Maybe let's just make it true and see what comes up if we type in true here. Then we would often see this drawn somewhere. Unless it's drawn underneath this guy. That could be the case. Okay, so let's just be super radical and just change some of all this out like that to see what is actually in that box. Okay, so that was the little guy that would be rendered right here. But that all depended on all the conditions that you saw in this layer. I think this one, the bottom quarter, is pretty much close to how this one works. And you would uh, see some of the same things going on up here, but maybe the second quarter is kind of interesting. So let's just see the whole thing. We have um, 
a composition of type layers. Then we have a number of layers here. The top box has a height of 10. Vertical alignment top, it's probably this one since it doesn't have any definition of width, then it's the whole, whole width. It has text with the project title. It is center left and I'm using pixel aerial bold. So that's the font. And then this is the background color, which is kind of white, but it's actually grayish. So we could type in, I guess white, can we save? Yeah, it's give us full white. And uh, we can also pick a different font if we like to have a different font. So uh, like this one, and it's rendering differently. Actually, this is anti-aliased, um, which may or may not look great on the displays. Let's see. Yeah, yeah, it works. But hey, these uh, the pixel fonts are generally better on these small displays. They stand out more clearly. So that's probably the one to, to prefer. Let's pick this one and see how that works. All right. That's actually a document. You should know about this document. If you go to support manual Skahoy, we have this graphics manual PDF file. So go into that one. That will actually help you to learn a little bit. You can see the data source icon is the one that we saw in the very beginning of this video. And then um, there's uh, other things you can explore. But as soon as you get into, hmm, let me see display graphics, um, actually the compositional thing, that is the one data sources. No, wait, 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 wait. Uh, okay, it doesn't have all the things that I wanted. Oh, more pages. Okay, so that's great. I just wanted to see data sources compositions. That's what we are looking at mainly here. And this is where I give a few examples of how these structures work and how it affects the, the output. So please go read that. Uh, now I've shown you a place where you can also play with it on your blue pill, which you probably own. So that's, that's a really nice place to go learn and experiment and here we have some explanations of how it all works i want to show you at the very bottom i should have like a list of fonts that you can use also in this case it's explaining how you can have nested compositions with box number one and two and and how all that stuff works out so uh, and here we are working with alpha channels and blends and so on that's pretty cool yeah, you can really you can actually do that. All the Photoshop things can be done. Now, um, nice to know reactor color codes, also image filters that are used up there and funds, which is on the last page here. So there you have your list of funds. These are the funds that we have embedded. Yep, and uh, how they are great for what? If they take Chinese, Japanese characters, special characters, you know, which funds are good for what? So you have that little bit of um, overview uh, here in this table. Yeah. All right. So that's that's the reference that you need to be super successful doing this. Um, apart from that, I think we just have like, you know, there's a box and this is 40 pixels wide, has a certain height. It is offset 12 in the Y direction. The next box is um, you know, different width, also offset 12. It's center aligned in this case. The first one was probably left aligned. So that would be this one. The dynamic content that comes from this inserted string. So we could say T equals for time and it would insert that if we wanted to. Yes. Okay. Guys, that's basically what I wanted to show you. A place to go and play with graphical compositions, how to box all these things together. Make sure that you have all your experiences done there, including reading this document. And uh, I think you'll be able to create some pretty amazing graphical compositions inside of Reactor for the color screen displays that Reactor can drive, either on a blue pill or on a frame shot or any of the other panels that Skahoy sells.